Hello everybody out there. Um, I'm not sure whether you have already found me. Um, I'm waiting a few moments to see whether somebody shows up. Perhaps uh, I'm not even in the right group. <laughs> and um, perhaps somebody, oh, I see people are coming now. Perhaps somebody can uh, give me a shout out whether you can hear me all right, whether you can see me all right. Then I'm much more relaxed because I suffer from much state fright when I do a talk or a workshop. So yeah, I can see people are there. Please give me a quick shout out. Yes, hi, I'm very happy. You can hear, see and see me. Everything is all right, perfect. Um, as I said, uh, great, great you're all there. <sighs> very good, so I'm a bit more relaxed. Um, we will do a reading in the end, so have your cards ready for this. And uh, before this, I will give you a few thoughts on uh, tarot and art, especially on creative writing, because we are talking about the magician in uh, at this weekend. And obviously, or for me, the magician who is uh, linked to Mercury has much to do about uh, with writing. And uh, writing is also the one art I really enjoy. Hello from New York. This must be pretty early for you. <laughs> Hi, Rose. And since, since I see Rose, I really want to thank Rose for inviting me to this uh, first uh, Stockholm Tarot conference. I'm very excited and very sad that I can't be there in person. Here in Germany, we're still in uh, lockdown and I don't know when we get out of it. It's quite annoying. But isn't it great we have the internet and are able to communicate and I really hope that next year um, I will see Stockholm, which I haven't really seen in my life yet. For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Kirsten Buchholzer and I am working here in Hamburg in Germany as a full-time tarot reader and teacher and I'm also an astrologer and I'm the head of the German Tarot Association. So whenever you feel to show, uh, to look at our site, uh, I'm very happy about this. But now I will start with my talk. You see, I have uh, the magician with me today from the beautiful magical tarot by Anthony Clark and Tony Willis. Um, this deck is very special to me because it's the one which got me hooked on tarot. And I quite like this guy there. <laughs> But anyway, um, as I said, I'm going to give you a few um, thoughts on uh, how I think tarot and art are linked. And then I will show you a reading, um, which is about how to meet your inner artist, your inner magician, and uh, give you another few thoughts, which you might find useful for your tarot development. If you have any questions, just don't hesitate to write them into the comments section, but uh, perhaps I uh, won't be able to answer them immediately. I will um, look through all the questions before we do the reading. Um, perhaps I also can see them, but when I'm in my talk, sometimes I get um, uh, lost with <laughs> what people write. Um, and now I will start the presentation. So, um, I already told you what I'm going to do with you, and uh, so I can show you the next uh, screen. And perhaps you can uh, follow me into the realm of astrology for a moment and think about what might happen if a very proud Leo is courting a beautiful Aries. It's probably that they will have a kind of very steamy encounter, an erotic encounter, and uh, it can be quite turbulent between the two of them. But what then if this Aries really is not into the Leo, but quite fancies a totally unsuitable Capricorn? And if this Capricorn then is uh, only uh, having eyes for a uh, cancer. These might have been the thoughts 
Margaret Mitchell had when she wrote her now very, very famous Gone with the Wind, because all her four characters are based on uh, the Zodiac. And uh, it's not only that, but uh, if you read through her novel, you will find that all the other characters too are uh, based on the zodiac and uh, all the main characters fit one of the signs of the zodiac. When I found this out, uh, I was totally interested in uh, astrology in uh, uh, comparison or in, in, in conjunction with uh, creative writing, because I always have been interested in, in creative writing and uh, in astrology. I thought, well, if you can do this with astrology, you probably can do this with tarot as well. Um, you don't need the star signs in order to create uh, interesting characters, but uh, Obviously, you can also work with court cards and uh, other tarot cards, and this can help you develop characters as well. So, before I continue my way through <laughs> tarot and creative writing, I um, should perhaps talk to you or discuss what art actually is. And there have always been two definitions of art around. One is that art is about mastership and needs to be thoroughly studied and brought to perfection before you can uh, be a great artist. And the other thought is that the other group of people, they say that art is uh, the result of a natural creative uh, urge to express oneself and that it doesn't need any education. In fact, education, they say, might hinder art. And uh, these are the two poles um, in between art is constantly moving. So I put down here a quote from Joseph Boyce, you probably all know. He said in the late uh, 70s that every free human being is creative. As creativity is what an artist is about, this means everybody is an artist. And as you can see on the presentation I've uh, written down here, this reminds me very much of uh, Alistair Crawley's famous quote that every man and every woman is a star. While we definitely need our uh, magician, the magician, our inner magician, in order to be uh, an artist or a good tarot reader, I believe, um, we also need the star very much uh, in order to be creative because the star is what we uh, inspire, uh, what, not what we, what we aspire towards and uh, how we can find our um, true profession. Um, if you think of this quarrel, I think we can bring this quarrel also into the tarot tribe because there are two. There are people who say in order to be great, a great tarot reader, you really need to um, be totally, um, uh, you have to have to, you totally have to study a lot in order to be a good tarot reader. You need to know all the systems, you need to know all the symbols in order to become a great tarot reader. While there are other people who say, oh, you don't need this at all. It's totally enough to have creative intuition and work with this. So, um, yeah, this is kind of the same discussion and uh, there's still not an answer <laughs> what is better. And uh, I'm not sure myself, I have to confess, because I do believe studying is important. But of course, uh, the creative impulses I get from beginners of the tarot are often very, very enlightening too. There are other philosophical thoughts we can have about uh, art, which we also can transfer in the Tarot world, um, to name but a few. Both tarotists and artists uh, observe human behavior. Both uh, explore people's inner and outer open and hidden motives, 
their conflicts and what hinders them to uh, yeah, come into their own. And they both unveil the difference between objective and subjective truth. Also, they describe and at best uh, solve ethical dilemmata and uh, different dilemmata people have. I'm just reading what Rose is writing, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think so too, Rose. I think it's a combination of the two of them, of uh, intuition and studying. Yeah, if you think about tarot and art, then we can say, you see a very creative version of Five of Wands by um, Lisa Sterl. Um, if you think about uh, tarot and art, we can say that creating a tarot deck, like Chris Butler, who's talking later, has done, um, is of course an, a visual art. But in my opinion, tarot readers are more closer to the art of uh, creative writing uh, of, or of writing because it's an oral occupation and um, they weave stories in my opinion. It's uh, all about uh, looking at images and uh, creating a story out of this and uh, telling this. And uh, I think the spider is a very um, good uh, power animal, do you say power animal for the tarot readers? Um, what is creative writing? I probably, I guess you all have uh, come upon this uh, term, but uh, just to go back into history, it was, uh, it started as a movement in the late 60s, early 70s, and it was developed uh, in order to help uh, creative self-expression and make writing more playful and accessible to people and also to focus on biographical work. And I think this is, has too something to do with tarot because um, tarot is a card game and it's uh, not always so serious, but it's supposed to be fun and playful. And uh, it's nice to sit down with friends and just shuffle cards and discuss them. And sometimes in the heat of being very magical, we forget about this of the, uh, um, when we use the tarot cards. Creative writing became um, a formal um, studying course. The first one was uh, started by the writers Malcolm Bradbury and Angus Wilson in 1970 at the University of East Anglia. And uh, since then it has become quite, uh, um, yeah, you can learn creative writing anywhere in every country, I guess. Um, and it's very popular for writers these days to use tarot as a tool for their character development, for plotting, um, or for helping their writer's block and their books uh, for writers uh, using tarot for writers. But the other way around, there still needs, uh, needs some books to be written, I think. One of the projects I have, actually. <laughs> um, because I believe that uh, if we tarot readers uh, look more into creative writing, we can become better tarot readers because we can let our words flow better. That's uh, one of my theses, uh, in fact. As you can see, I'm quite, uh, um, I like uh, creative writing a lot. Actually, I studied at the University of East Anglia, not in the 70s, but uh, in the early 90s. And uh, I was, uh, uh, I really liked the creative writing course there. Um, at the time uh, when I studied in Norwich, I, uh, a book came out which was very influential for artists of every kind and I think it's also a book um, which tarot readers can profit from which was um, The Way, uh, the Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I'm not sure whether you're aware of this book but uh, 
She was married to Martin Scorsese. She was, uh, she is, uh, she, she's still alive, but I don't know what, know what she's doing yet. Uh, I think after she wrote this book, um, she doesn't need to work anymore because it became a huge bestseller. Um, she was uh, married to Martin Scorsese and uh, he met Lisa Minnelli when they were doing New York, New York. She wrote the script for this and there was a turbulent uh, situation, as you can imagine. He left her for Lisa Minnelli and she had a breakdown. She uh, became addicted to alcohol and uh, then she joined the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And... Um, this course had a huge impact on her and the artist's way this book is a 12 weeks course based on what she learned at the aaas in order um, to help um, bring towards uh, one's own spirituality and to um, become more creative and uh, as you can see the subtitle is higher creativity. With this book, she wanted to help people to become spiritual creative, which is something we want to do uh, with Taro as well. And like boys, she believes that creative art is something which is inherited in every human being and that uh, it only that we only become proper human beings if we uh, leave our uh, let our artist art or inner art flow. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> you want to know which character, uh, um, uh, which characters are um, involved in Gone with the Wind? I am. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I can do this without um, going back. Um, on my screen. So for anybody who's interested, uh, Aries is obviously Scarlett O'Hara. Taurus is uh, her father, Gerald O'Hara. Gemini are the twins Prissy and Tarleton. They are in the very beginning of the film uh, courting Scarlett. Uh, Cancer is Melanie. Leo is Reth. Uh, Red, you say. Virgo is Ellen O'Hara, the mother of uh, Scarlet. Uh, Libra is Belle Watling, the courtesan. Um, Scorpio is Mummy. Uh, Sagittarius is Bonnie, the child of Red and Scarlet. The Capricorn is uh, Ashley. And uh, the Aquarius is Frank Kennedy. Uh, the second as husband of Scarlet, who has these uh, libertarian ideas. Pisces is Karen, um, Scarlet's younger sister, and Charles is, uh, is um, also Charles, Scarlet's first husband, and uh, many other people are more the Piscean characters. So I hope this help, helps you. Um, but coming back to uh, the artist, let me see. Yeah, I said everything. So in her book, um, Julia describes two techniques how to release your inner artist. And one, as I know, as I said, I don't know whether you have heard of this, but I'm sure you have heard of this, is the morning pages. And the morning pages are you're supposed to get up in the morning and uh, sit down before you do anything and just take a, three sheets of paper and write down all your emotions with with your hand, uncensored. You're not allowed to cross out anything, but you're just, you're just supposed to write and write and write. And this is supposed to give you um, a feeling that your emotions are out that you have written them down on paper, um, but that you can create a distance um, to your emotions. And she says, once you do this every day, at least for 12 weeks, you will find uh, artistic release. This, of course, as you can see on the presentation, reminds me very much of what we do in Tarot, especially when we start out uh, becoming Tarot readers, we do our daily card reading and um, 
it's not so much about uh, letting steam off tarot card reading dailies, but it's about to learn more about the tarot, but also about uh, impulses for the day. And it can have a cathartic, cathartic feeling, I think, the daily cards. Plus, if you combine it with a tarot journaling, which is becoming very popular again these days, I just put here the um, just uh, a released uh, tarot journal by, for the modern witch tarot. If you do this more consciously, you kind of do the same as you couldn't do um, according to Julia Cameron. So um, when I thought about this, I, th I, I thought, well, perhaps uh, I haven't been doing my daily cards so often anymore. <sighs> Once you, you do lots of readings, you kind of lose this. But perhaps it's a good idea if I want to get more connected to my creativity again, I should do this in a more conscious way and perhaps even start journaling again. Just a thought for you out there as well. The second technique she describes is uh, the rendezvous with your artist. And for her, this means that you go out into a restaurant totally on your own, have a meal and get in touch with yourself. Perhaps imagine the artist sitting next to you. Well, we have lockdown. We can't do this here in Germany. I don't know whether you can do it somewhere else in the world right now. But you don't have to do necessarily this. You can do just, uh, you can reserve one day in the week just for yourself. It's not about dating another person like date night in a marriage, but dating yourself and doing a nice rendezvous with yourself. And she says, if you do this, for 12 weeks at least, you also will meet your inner artist. You will be able to make an image of him and uh, get in, more, in better contact with him. And this is a technique, of course, very well apt for using in tarot because we have 78 artists we can meet. And um, this can mean for you that you draw once a week a card and uh, sit down on a table or next in front of you wh wherever you're sitting and get in touch with it while getting in conversation with it. There are um, readings, um, spreads where you can uh, have a rendezvous or an interview with the deck or with tarot card. Perhaps you do something like that. Um, or of course you can do the spread I will show you in a moment. The other thing you can do in order to make uh, um, meet your inner magician, which I also call the inner artist, um, is that you look into your soul cards. For me, the inner magician, to make this more clear, is uh, not necessarily the Magus card, but it is a card which is in, uh, which is vibrating with you. And this is a soul card. I'm sure most of you know how to uh, know your soul card, but just in case I wrote it down again. So all you need is your birth date. Here I have chosen a birth date, uh, which is the 3rd of February, 1948. You uh, first count together the day and the month, which is uh, five here in this date. And then you put day and month onto the year. So five plus 1948 and out comes 1953. And then you draw all these four numbers together. One plus nine plus five plus, plus three is 18. 18 is already a tarot trump. We are now in the realm of the trumps. So 18 would be the moon, but this is not your soul card. This is another card which is uh, vibrating with you, but not so important for this exercise. You need to go down one more until you have only one number between one and nine. And here in this, uh, with this birth date, you end up with a nine, the hermit. 
I really like here Lisa Stirl's hermit interpretation because uh, she's having this notebook in her hand. I'm not sure whether she's opening it in order to write something down or just closing it because she has everything in her brain now and doesn't need to work with a, a notebook anymore. Anyway, so a nine in a magician, in an artist, would be a person who um, is perhaps uh, interested in the in the mystic, um, who likes a bit of fantasy, who is um, uh, has a sense of philosophy in their artistic expression, in their writing, perhaps. Um, philosophizes about uh, why we are here, about the, uh, the, the the shortness of life, perhaps, and um, is also profiting in his work or her work from personal experience. And um, he also might be interested in unlocking secrets, or she might be interested in unlocking secrets. And this is the birth state um, of Henrik uh, Mankell, I hope I pronounce him correctly. Um, he's a, a author much appreciated in Germany, but I'm sure in Sweden as well. And uh, obviously he has all this in him, uh, in his books, uh, in, his, uh, in his writings. Uh, I, can, I can relate to that he is um, a hermit in, in his soul card. So, if you want to know more about uh, how you can best express yourself in an artistic way, I think it's very it's a good start to look at your soul card and to think about what are the creative aspects of this soul card. And uh, then you can find uh, um, uh, then you can find out um, um, how you best approach your creative um, abilities. Um, yes, I think so too. He's a great writer. So here are your um, options. Um, you can either be a magician in your writing, a uh, hermit. I didn't put them in the right order because I was creative. <laughs> the high priestess, the empress, the chariot, the lovers, the emperor, or um, the uh, empress, obviously, um, the hierophant. I put uh, here um, strength as eight in here because it's the number of weight and uh, Lisa Sterl gave um, uh, strength. But of course, you could also use um, judgment. No, it's not judgment. It's justice, justice uh, as an eight. Good. Yeah, that's about what I wanted to say. And uh, very good. We still have time for the reading. Are there any questions you have right now um, which you want to um, show me, uh, ask me? Just drink something and wait whether there are some questions coming up. Okay. You can tell me whether you like what I'm saying. <laughs> but not many people have disappeared by now, so probably you like it. Um, it's quite hard to get feedback. I'm, I'm a person, I'm a chariot. Uh, I am a person who really likes to get feedback uh, in order to um, be more expressive, creative. But anyhow, so based on what uh, Julia Cameron wrote and on what I thought uh, of interest regarding creativity, I created um, a reading. It's called Rendezvous with my artist. And uh, this reading is especially about um, inspiring your artistic amb uh, ambitions. Um, and it could also help you when you start a new project, uh, especially when you start a um, creative project, uh, but of course you can use it for other things as well. Um, perhaps you want to invent something, perhaps you want to start uh, with something uh, hobby-esque, something like this. This is the reading for. Um, 
Great. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> yes, Chris. Um, um, I actually was uh, was thinking of you because you will talk after me in a, a bit later and uh, of your beautiful, beautiful deck um, and uh, how this comes together um, regarding creative art. Um, and thanks, Marian, for um, your talk and all the others. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So when I um, create a tarot deck, I usually take out uh, a card I like. Uh, in this case, I chose the magicians, uh, the magician by um, Wade and Coleman Smith, and um, I look at. Uh, the symbols on the cards. I will, let me just do this a bit bigger now so you can see better. Right. Um, so I chose five positions for this reading and we have obviously the higher self. Oh, I actually, um, no, I don't need my glasses. Um, the higher self, which is the magic wand of the... Um, of the magus and this position for me is what within me seeks expression regarding a new project. The second position is coins, which is here. And the coin is about um, in what art, well, you don't necessarily need art, but if you want to do something about art, uh, it would be good to put this in. And what art form does it want to be manifested? The third position, the cups position, is about what emotional approach is needed to start the artistic process. The fourth position is about what background information um, research uh, supports the whole thing, so the intellectual input I need for the project, it's air, and the staff, the fire is, how do I start? What's my first step towards getting uh, done with the project? And um, I was going to draw the cards, but I just realized if I do this and show you, you can't see the no 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 this should be possible just let me um switch hold on for a sec yes it works i just have to take off the green screen so i have my cards here so i hope you all have your cards as well and um, I'm working with the beautiful uh, Le Tarot uh, de Marseille Wait by Emmanuelle Guerre, a French uh, tarot specialist. And she really made a great, um, had the great idea to conjunct the, um, uh, the Wait deck with the Marseille symbolism. I really like this. And um, you all can shuffle your cards now. I'm going to shuffle mine. And um, you can all draw five cards if you fancy doing this. I personally will ask uh, about my next writing project, which is... Um, actually, I need to know how I better can... Uh, how I can better um, work with my blog because I have a blog and uh, it's much easier to make videos than blogging, I have to say, though I have lots of material for my blog and I will try to find out what I can do about this. And perhaps you all take a moment to get in touch with your inner magus and uh, then draw five cards for the project you have in hand. And um, if you do this, um, I can of course answer your questions if you have if you can't understand um, what you're having, um, which cards you have drawn. Um, we still have some time, but uh, I also will just demonstrate with this reading I have here what you can do with this. So I have five cards here. I don't put them in a special order, and uh, I just look at the first position, which is the 
higher self um, like this. <laughs> And um, I will make this uh, bigger. Yes. So I have here as the first position, what within me seeks expression, the um, page of cups. For me, the page of cups is uh, perfect for expressing something new. Um, the first thing which comes up in my mind when I connect this to my blog is that I am not emotional enough with my blog. Videos for me are really easy to do because I can show myself, I can talk to people while I'm doing it and it's uh, really witty at times. I just uh, I enjoy doing lives a lot not necessarily talks like this, but lives. Uh, I do my weekly column, for example, where I just draw um, for each star sign a card and say something about this. And uh, this tells me that uh, in order to have more fun with the, um, with the blog, I need to also find a way of being more emotional um, with it. With it. The, Page of Cups wants me to um, wants to be released, so emotions want to be released in this project, and I need to think about how to do this. But luckily, I have this tarot reading and perhaps get some ideas how to do it. The second position is, as I said, the Earth position. In what art form does it want to be manifested? So, in what um, art form does this page want to be manifested? I said in a blog, um, but um, I get here the seven of wands, um, the way. <laughs> okay, um, this brings uh, something up in me. So seven of wands is for me always hard work. I have to fight in order to um, yeah, to get what I want. And um, actually, sometimes when I block, I have uh, the fear that people will um, uh, comment nastily. It's not so much with videos, actually, strangely enough, but when I do something in writing, it's more, It's when it's written, it's out there and can't be taken back, uh, can't be taken back so easily. In my opinion, it's just my opinion, um, the, uh, um, like a video, for example. Um, and I sometimes have the fear that people will uh, not be happy about my ideas or just uh, a shitstorm will happen or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, perhaps this card tells me uh, I am a seven after all, that um, I need to be more courageous and just stand uh, for what I have to say and stand um, for my opinion. And um, this is which comes up for me just as a first thought. The third position is the cups position. The emotional approach uh, is needed to start the assististic process. We, oui. um, I got the three of swords for this. Um, perhaps you out there have other ideas um, when I'm drawing these cards. Um, you can write them in the comments, by the way. Um, yeah, it's a watery card and I have the three of swords. Um, the social, um, perhaps um, what comes up for me is that I have to, well, it's, fine, it's a bit difficult for me right now, but um, Perhaps I need to face what I just mentioned, that uh, feedback can, of, of course, also be not so nice. Um, and since it's a tarot block, it's mainly about readings and stuff, I should focus on the um, reading, I should focus on the problems people have and because of this, they find uh, tarot readers, for example, so love problems or whatever. But this is something I really don't like to do because um, it's uh, what everybody does. I wanted to be more intellectual, but yeah, perhaps I need to 
<laughs> stop being uh, highbrow about my blog and just uh, write whatever nonsense I have in mind. This would be a compromise for me. The next position is the air card. What background information do I need in order to research? And I, <laughs> I got the sun. So actually, this card tells me I don't really do need to do much more research. It's uh, for me. This card is always about uh, I am full as a person. I have everything I want to uh, express uh, in me. And uh, yeah, there is not really any need. So I should really get started immediately with my reading um, or with my writing. And uh, this might be the fifth position. How do I get started? And <laughs> I got la force, uh, strength. Um, yeah. So obviously, again, it's about courage, about uh, facing one's uh, inhibitions. I didn't guess I had uh, so much inhibitions. I have to confess, I thought this would be uh, quite easy going. <laughs> um, and I'm just too lazy. But obviously, there's something within me which is reluctant to put out uh, stuff in writing, though I write quite a bit. But uh, in summary, I see that I need to be more personal um, with my writings and that I, um, yeah, that I can um come up with something good once I dare to put out my opinion frankly and be <clears throat> less highbrow. So these are the thoughts uh, I had when I did this reading. Um my time is almost up and um I hope you did the reading out there. It's a bit difficult to do your own reading while I do my reading and talk to you. But I thought it's uh, good to give you an example. And um, there are a few minutes left uh, before I leave you to the next uh, um, speaker. I think Chris is still a little later. I don't know who's next, actually. Um, but uh, if you have any questions right now, apart from who's who in Gone with the Wind, which is really exciting, um, please write them down. <clears throat> Meanwhile, um, if you are interested in this uh, artistic uh, um, subject in comparison to astrology, for example, there are other techni techniques. Um, Oh God, I don't know her name now. Browning, um, who wrote Harry Potter? <laughs> I'm very sorry, I never read it. Um, uh, K.J. Rowling, Rowling, Rowling. Um, <laughs> she um, gave uh, Harry Potter a birth date, time and place and developed Harry's character from that because she was into astrology as well when she wrote the book. Um... How can I interpret, let's see, Anya asks, how can I interpret Five of Swords, the Empress, Six of Swords, the Moon, and Seven of Swords? How to start with Seven of Swords? Um, for me, yeah, thank you, Rowling. Uh, for me, the Seven of Swords is always about uh, don't talk to anybody about it. Um, keep it to yourself and be quick about it because somebody else might be having the same idea as you have in your project. And um, also he might or she might be trying to steal it, but this doesn't uh, need to be the case. It's just that uh, you're perhaps having an idea other people's have at the same time. So don't talk, be quick. This is the seven of swords and um, if you have the higher self-expression, the five of swords, um, it looks a bit like um, you have been trying often to do this. There are lots of swords cards in your readings. Um, uh, you have been trying often to express yourself. There's the empress in this reading. Um, so probably uh, you need to go into reclusion for some time in order to do this and uh, think about your inner artist card as well. So this is what I can up can come up with quickly, Anya. I hope this helps you. 
Um, yeah, exactly. So um, astrology wise, uh, you can play a lot about uh, by giving people uh, a date and time and of course you can base a character on a tarot card as well quite easily if you feel uh, like this for example i compared the heiress to the queen of wands um scarlet o'hara would be a great queen of wands i think and the other thing um, if you feel like it um, and know something about astrology for example, if you look at the um, horoscope, the chart of Jane Austen, um, you can really see Pride and Prejudice in the chart. It's quite interesting. So if you look at your own chart and make characters out of the different planets, you can use tarot cards for that as well. Um, all the cards are attributed to um, tarot cards. Um, then you might find a novel within you or a new art project. Yeah, this is, uh, my time is up, I see. And um, I really hope, uh, well, you already gave me feedback, you liked the talk. If you still have any more questions, you can uh, uh, put them in the comments. I will monitor later. Here in Germany, we have Mother's Day today. So I need to drink some uh, coffee with my family now. And um, I, if you can't if you want the reading just let me know i will or i will put the the, the file uh, the um the the reading itself into the group so you can um have it and use it later and um yeah that's me thanks again for having me and i really hope i can visit uh, next year sweden and rose i really hope um that you're um, gathering is a great success and uh, keep going please great thank you for your feedback um, I really enjoyed it and uh, I feel much better now my stage fright is gone <laughs> have a great time bye